This is the SVS PB3000 subwoofer, and this is the Paradigm Defiance X15 subwoofer. Today we are going to compare them to each other. Not only will we compare them in sound demos, we will compare the build quality, the features, and we will compare their room EQ wizard measurements to see how they did in my room. Unlike most comparison videos, I'm going to tell you which one I prefer right in the beginning of the video, but make sure to stick around to find out why I personally prefer the PB3000, and to find out some pretty good reasons why the Paradigm X15 shouldn't be crossed off your list just yet either. I've done reviews on both these subwoofers already and I've linked those in the top right hand corner if you'd like to check them out. Alright so let's get things started by comparing the build quality. But really quick before we do, here are the basic specs of each subwoofer. The Paradigm X15 is a 15 inch woofer with a 900 watt RMS and 1800 watt peak amplifier and it is an enclosure that measures 24 and 5 8 inches high, 23 and 3 16 inches wide and 24 and 5 8 inches deep with the grill and it weighs in at 92 pounds. It does have Bluetooth built in for the Paradigm app. It also has anthem room correction built in. The X15 has a frequency response of 18 hertz to 240 hertz plus or minus 3 dB. The SVS PB3000 is a 13 inch woofer with an 800 watt RMS and 2500 watt peak amplifier and it also has Bluetooth built in for the SVS app. It's all housed in an enclosure that measures 21.9 inches high, 18.3 inches wide and 23.5 inches deep without the grill and it is 26 inches deep with the grill and it weighs in at 82.2 pounds. It has a frequency response of 16 to 260 hertz plus or minus 3 dB. When it comes to pricing, these two are basically identical here in Canada at $2,199, and this is why I chose to compare them. In the US, the PB3000 is $1,599 US dollars. Uh, for current pricing, though, click the link down in the description below. And the Paradigm X15 is currently $1,999 US dollars. All right, so moving along to the build quality. To put it simply, I prefer the build quality of the PB3000. It's just a little bit more uniform and consistent. The PB3000 has a black ash finish all the way around that doesn't exactly wow you, uh, but it serves its purpose and it is well done. The front of the Paradigm X15 actually does look a little nicer and more premium in my opinion than the PB3000. It has a smooth matte black uh, front baffle, but if you look at the rest of the X15, it's wrapped in a fairly cheap plastic wrap. It gets marked up incredibly easily, <laughs> even if you're trying your hardest not to mark it up. But with that said, the X15 still looks good in its all black finish. I just feel that they should have used a better quality wrap. I also prefer the heavy metal grill for the PB3000 over the wood frame and cloth grill of the Paradigm X15. The metal grill of the PB3000 just offers something a little bit different and interesting. It also is much more durable. When it comes to the amplifiers on the back, there are some differences worth noting. The PB3000 only has RCA inputs, whereas the X15 goes over and above and offers RCA inputs, XLR inputs, as well as high level speaker inputs, but they only accept banana plugs. Both of them do have a port for wireless adapters. Where the SVS pulls ahead uh, is the fact that it has six buttons on the back to control some of the subwoofers for settings where the X15 only has a gain volume knob for adjustments. If you want to make more adjustments on the X15, you have to use the app, uh, whereas the SVS has the app as well, but you also have that functionality on the back of the subwoofer itself. But one main feature the SVS app has that I wish the X15 had is PEQ, but with the X15 having Anthem room correction, you can make some changes in that software that can provide some similar effects, but not exactly the same as PEQ. And that's where the X15 pulls ahead with the fact that it has Anthem room correction built in. It comes with a microphone so that you can calibrate the subwoofer to your room specifically. This is in addition to the room calibration software that your AVR or processor would use. And when it comes to this feature set, I believe that the X15 has a lot to offer in this area. And I think it is the winner here, simply given the fact that it has a lot more inputs as well as Anthem room correction built in. Where things get a little more difficult to decide is in the performance department. Let's have a look at some room EQ measurements in my room. Keep in mind, there was no room calibration enabled on either of these subwoofers and the measurements are of the subwoofers only with no speakers. The response is specific to my room. The peaks and nulls that you see are due to my challenging room and aren't really a fault of either of the subwoofers. First I'm going to show the compression measurements for each and then I'm going to show the top performance measurement together. So here we are looking at the compression testing of the X15 placed in the front left side of my room. As you can see on the top brown line we were hitting some obvious compression so we'll just ignore that line and look at the blue line below it. There may be some slight compression happening happening there, but it is pretty linear, so we'll call that our max line for this one. We are hitting 102 dB at 16 Hz, and our peak is about 105 dB at 23.5 Hz. 
Now let's have a look at the PB3000 in the front left hand side of my room. If you look at the top blue line, we are hitting obvious compression there. So let's ignore that line and look at the green line below it. Just as with the X15 measurements we just discussed, there may be some very slight compression happening here, but for the most part it is pretty linear. So we'll call that our max line for the PB3000. Here we are pretty much identical to the X15 at 16 hertz with 102 dB and our peak is 109 dB at 23.5 hertz. Now looking at the max lines of the X15 and PB3000 together, we can see that the performance is pretty similar, but the PB3000 has more peak output, especially when looking at 27 hertz down to about 16 hertz. The X15 does roll off slower after 16 hertz though, and does have more output from 30 to about 50 hertz. Now just for reference and for comparison's sake, let's have a look at them both placed in the front right hand corner of my room. Here is the PB3000 in the front right hand corner. You can see compression on the top green line, so let's ignore that one and focus on the orange line below it. We have about 100 dB at 16 hertz and a peak at 32.5 hertz of 106.8 dB. Now we're looking at the X15 in the front right hand corner. We hit compression on the top red line, so we will ignore it and focus on the purple line below it. We are again exactly at 100 dB at 16 hertz and a peak of 107 dB at 33 hertz. And now here we are with both max lines together. The most noticeable difference here is that the PB3000 has more output between 16 and about 30 hertz. Other than that, they are fairly similar, except the X15 rolls off slower after 16 hertz. So when it comes to their performance, they are pretty close, all things considered considered, but the PB3000 does seem to have a little more oomph from 16 to about 30 hertz, and the X15 rolls off slower below 16 hertz, but still drops off significantly. Because they are both so close, it's hard to draw a definitive line between them based on performance alone. Personally, I do lean a little more towards the PB3000 though because of that extra output from 16 to about 30 hertz, but it is up to you as an individual which one you prefer here. Where the differences start to shine through again is in the sound of these subwoofers. Before I explain what I think here are some demos of each subwoofer playing the same content. For these demos, the room calibration was disabled, the subwoofers were level matched using the tone generator for my AVM90 and REW SPL meter along with the U Mic 1. Always remember that my room, my recording equipment, along with the device that you're listening on, will greatly affect the sound, so don't take this as an accurate depiction of what I was hearing in my room, and make sure to use a good set of headphones or your system with some capable subwoofers to listen to these demos. I hope that you guys enjoyed those demos, and if you do enjoy comparisons like this, you might as well subscribe, tick the bell icon if you do, and if you find this video helpful, make sure that you hit that like button. Now let me describe what I heard in my room between these two subwoofers. First things first, the PB3000 comes off as louder. Now remember, it was level matched to the main listening position with the tone generator of my AVM90 along with the SPL meter of Roo using the U Mic 1 microphone. Now maybe it's the internal DSP differences between the X15 and the PB3000 because we know that they have similar performance based on the measurements, but maybe it's the performance bump that the PB3000 has between 16 and 30 hertz. But whatever it is, it does sound louder to my ears. In my room, they both have some port noise when pushed close to their limit 
limits, but the PB3000 is more noticeable because those front facing ports. The X15 can be heard, but it's not as much because it's firing down into my carpeted concrete. To put it simply, you will notice more port noise with the PB3000 versus the X15, but they both do have port noise. But with all that being said, the PB3000 does seem to sound a little bit better in my opinion with the port noise aside. To me, it just sounds a little bit deeper and has a more throaty tone to it. Neither of these subwoofers are particularly boomy. Normally, if a subwoofer is boomy though, it just needs to be EQ'd or placed better in your room. These two subwoofers are both pretty clean, tight, and punchy, but the PB3000 provides a better rumble. If you can't tell by the sound alone, take a listen to how much more my room and fireplace are vibrating with the PB3000, even though they are at the same volume and are level matched at the main listening position. The PB3000 just excites my room more and gives the impression that it is more powerful. I wouldn't say that the PB3000 is any less clean than the X15, just a different sound signature with a more throaty low growl. The X15 seems to be just a little bit more lean. Both do sound fantastic for their price range and both can shake the room quite nicely, but the PB3000 just has something a little bit more. I would say they are both equally good for music, but for home theater, the PB3000 will give you some extra shake. But I would also like to say that the X15 isn't exactly lacking in the shake department, just that the PB3000 does it a little bit better. So with absolutely everything in mind and everything that we've talked about considered, I still prefer the PB3000 and here's why. Yes, it does have more port noise when pushed, but if you are planning on two, three, or even four of them, this won't be much of a concern because you won't need to push them close to their limits. But if port noise is your number one concern, just go with the X15, plain and simple. Also, if you want Anthem room correction built in, that is a great reason to go with the X15. But if you already have room calibration that does a good job with base management, or if you're using a mini DSP, then the arc feature won't be of much use to you. But here's exactly why I prefer the PB3000. First of all, because of its size. It's just more manageable in the room. No, it isn't a lot smaller, uh, but the X15 is a 2 two-foot cube that can be quite large to deal with. The PB3000 offers very similar, and in some cases better performance, but in a noticeably smaller package. So if space is a concern for you, or you're looking for the best better wife acceptance factor, I think that the PB3000 is the best choice. Another reason that I prefer the PB3000 is because of that deeper, more throaty sound. It isn't distorted or boomy, it just seems to be a little bit deeper. That also translates to a lot more rumble. I don't know exactly what it is. Again, maybe it's the fact that it has more output uh, between 16 and 30 hertz, but it is very noticeable in my room. I would say that they're pretty much on par for music, but the PB3000 will give you more tactile response for movies. But if that isn't really your thing, you can always plug the ports on the PB3000 and run it in sealed mode to reduce that effect a little, which also makes the PB3000 a little bit more versatile. Lastly, I think that the PB3000 has a more consistent and more resilient build quality, specifically with their choice of black ash wrap. It won't mark up as easily as the X15, and in my opinion, it looks nicer all around. So that's why I prefer the PB3000, but it really was a close battle between these two. Let me know what you thought of them down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it. If you want to see the individual reviews of these subwoofers, they are linked in the top right hand corner. Links are in the description if you want to check out these subwoofers any further. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.